What do you do when you are faced with challenges? Run away or sit back and make something out of it? He's always on this thing. Like sometimes I will complain, Farouk, why are you giving this thing too much of your time? Like 24 hours he can go without stopping. From when he was uh, four or five years, he started with this uh, phone something. He will take your phone. He will go into so many places to hide. Hello everyone and welcome to the Highway Experience once again. Today I have something really amazing to share with you. Here with a teenager who has been able to do what even some adults cannot do. So many Nigerians in the UAE have been facing the challenge of visa. Omar is one of those in the UAE studying. This challenge has left him not being able to attend school. But Omar did not sit back like every other kid. He decided to do something that has prompted me to interview him. Please get your drink, get your popcorn and let's hear from Omar. Well, uh, as you said, uh, I'm from Nigeria, Karuna State. I'm 16 years old, uh, turning 17 this year. Uh, I was formerly studying in Bechi Queen International School. Uh, I left when I was in SS1. I came here to study in, in Dubai. But unfortunately, we ran into these restrictions that uh, UAE has been placing on Nigeria and all that. And it's been going on for a few years now. Uh, I was formerly studying here in the United you know, Arab Emirates, and uh, my education here has kind of uh, what's the word? It's stuck here. Yeah. Since education got stuck, so many people have relocated back. Uh, so many are doing other things like homeschooling. Mm -hmm. What pushed you into developing a company? Uh, the idea for Cruiseway came from a very real need I observed. Yeah, you know, when you look at uh, Nigeria, you see that we're facing a lot of issues in many different areas. Like many people relied on airtime for communications, for data and all that. But uh, sometimes... Even beyond communication and data, some people yeah. use it to send money to their loved ones yeah. from the villages. They don't need to travel and everything. So yeah. it's a big market. Yeah, very yeah. big market. And uh, like sometimes people, uh, maybe they're in a hurry, they are distracted or something. Someone can reach out to the wrong amount. Instead of 1,000, you put 10,000. Okay. And now we are stuck with 10,000 Naira credits with nowhere to take it to. It's not that there aren't solutions for this, there are, but the charges, they are very high. Like if you go to Pampi now, I think they have about 15% charge. So I, I thought like maybe I could simplify and uh, give people a better and easier solution that's also more cost effective. Yeah, and then that's it. Okay. Like within that frame, uh, a friend of mine came to me with, you know, this idea that we should team up to build this product. And uh, I did more research on the market. I saw that already there are many solutions for financial problems in the market. But what if I tried to like, get into this from a different angle? So if I uh, mistakenly buy 10,000 Naira credit and I want to sell it back through your platform, um, does it have any link that will refund the money back to my account or how do I get this money back? Uh, it's a process that uh, the money is transferred uh, into Cruisepay. Like it gives you credit into your Cruisepay wallet, okay. which you can then use. You can choose to pay it back into your account. You can also use it to do other things. You can send it as Nera. You can pay bills. You can buy gift cards. You can even put it in your virtual USD card, which okay. is another issue in Nigeria. We don't yeah. have a lot of USD cards, okay. and. Uh, people can use it to make international purchases and all that. Okay, now you're talking of USD. Mm. Uh, Nigeria has been facing a lot of challenges with uh, Forex exchange, uh, most especially uh, people controlling the rates from outside the government mm. and aside that, accessing Forex to travel abroad. Do you think this your platform would not be flagged because of the access that you're giving people to be able to transfer Naira into USD? Yeah, uh, it's... More like uh, a one-time purchase thing, like a person can create his virtual card and top up so that he can yeah. do stuff like this. There's Spotify or Apple yeah. music subscriptions. Is there a or... limit to how much you can transfer? Yeah, there is a limit. There is a limit. Yeah. That's... At your age, I'm really, really baffled by the, the kind of analysis you're giving. Were you working with a team or you worked single-handedly as a person? Um, initially, I, I worked single-handedly as I ventured more into the you know the marketing
market i saw that like this is too much way too much for one person and i started looking forums you know communities tech like other people that are like me in nigeria and uh, i was lucky enough to find a group of people that would work with me till the very end in this society or in this generation of today most people are distracted by a lot of things like tiktok youtube facebook snapchat how did you stay motivated to keep pushing and being able to achieve all of this you don't have any sports you do you don't have social life mm, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I had a like very uh, secluded upgrowing uh, i didn't really have a lot of friends growing up and uh, i'm rarely on social media i don't have tiktok i'm barely on instagram it's only like facebook that i use most of the time that one too is to advertise cruise pay okay so that's so, the brand name yeah that's brand name cruise pay cruise pay yeah okay well how did you come about the name <laughs> you know uh this this in nigeria the cruise, cruise yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so people are like into cruise now cruise yeah okay so I cruise pay, cruise pay. yeah with it's, a it's memorable. <laughs> do you think it, the system of education that we practice in nigeria as a country encourages people like you who have ideas to be honest the system in nigeria is not very supportive yeah and the system of education doesn't provide exactly the kind of skills you need to grow your talent you know they have like set stuff for every student like every person has to go through the same teaching the same everything and you can't really get to explore your own personal talent. Able to have gone to school in Nigeria and school here in the UAE, do you think the influence of the UAE has helped push you to this level or it's just like it's an inborn thing that you came with? I'd say a bit of both because uh, people here are usually extremely supportive, you know. Uh, they give a lot of moral support. If you need help, you can just ask. Uh, initially, uh, this school spirit was my first design. Uh, one of my teachers kept asking him how to do this, how to do that on Figma. Yeah, that's it. But some people, when they have ideas, uh, sharing it with others, they are really scared because easily somebody can take up your idea. Mm -hmm. uh, having shared it with a couple of friends here, I think you like they could one day take over your idea. Mm, you know, you can't really trust everyone 100% to yeah. be honest. There's still that doubt that it might happen, but definitely I trust the people that are around me and uh, I hope that it doesn't... Yeah, we all, hope, yeah. we all hope that it goes yeah. through well for you. Mm. Um, we now talk of investors. Mm. Is it a zero naira, zero dollars startup business? Do you need people to invest? Have you been able to find those who would invest? Or how much are you looking at starting up this whole project with? You know, there aren't a lot of grants for startups in Nigeria. Okay, so, another, another challenge. Yeah, to be honest, the system in Nigeria is not very supportive of like upgrowing news. Like for instance, now I, I, I can't even register the company under my own name. I had to register under my brother's name. Yeah, uh, right now I'd say definitely I, I would need financial support because uh, there are a lot of registrations I have to do, legal stuff and uh, APIs that I have to buy and all that. Definitely I would need appreciate the financial backing but my main reason why i haven't found an investor yet because right now i'm still doing a market analysis uh, i'd have to see specifically the market that we would be dealing with yeah and uh, the roi you've been studying uh, marketing business what did you actually study or what are you studying for the fact you're 16 now so it means you stopped studying like two years ago you were 14 when you stopped where did you get all of this knowledge that you are really putting up most not just mostly all of it is really just self-research you know i've uh, browsed on the internet i asked around people that have experience with this kind of stuff yeah so uh mostly from youtube you know there are a lot of good content Materials. creators yeah, yeah. and uh, the people around me that are into business like my brother okay he's into business i used to usually ask him things that are implementing our pitch deck which i'm still working on yeah so once I'm done with a comprehensive analysis of the market, then I'll see if I'll find an investor. Family support. Yeah, family. This, this is one part mm. aspect of uh, growing a business or starting up anything. Uh, most of our parents will tell you, you have to finish school if you want to do anything. Finish your school first, then you can decide what you want to do. How has your parents, your family, your brothers, your sisters been able to support you yeah, uh, the support from my family has been amazing, honestly. 
uh, I've received a lot of moral support, a lot of financial support from them. You know, there are a lot of times where I thought, like, maybe I should quit, maybe it's not worth it, and they just keep cheering for me, and I it's just, I have to do this, I have to do this for them, so I have to make challenges. them proud. No, yeah. oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's good really having you around. A word of advice for anyone who has a dream and is limiting themselves, either because of their age, then you have to you have to rise up, you have to break free from the chain. You know, you can't let yourself restrict yourself. You know, you, you can't be your own enemy. So you have to just bring your talent out there, do what you love, and hope other people accept you for it. Even if they don't, see just you're doing what you love. At least that's more than enough. All right. Thank you so much, Omar. I'm really delighted to be the first person to have interviewed you. You are a very talented kid. I hope to see you at the top. Uh, keep working on it, stay focused, and I believe you will achieve your, your dreams. Uh, in case anybody wants to reach you. As I said, uh, I'm not really on social media much, but yeah. uh, at Cruise Bay, we have uh, social media handles that are reachable. We have Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Thread, all those. All right, so I'll put the link to his platforms yeah. on the description of this video. And uh, I'll also try to put them on the screen okay. so you can reach out to him. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's Aisha. I am uh, Omar's immediate sister. Yes, uh, we grew together and we moved to Dubai with our entire family. Growing up together, I've seen Farouk being dedicated in what he's doing. He's always on this thing. Like sometimes I will complain, Farouk, why are you giving this thing too much of your time? Like 24 hours he can go without stopping. When he's eating, he's on the phone. When he's in the toilet, sometimes he goes with his phone. Farouk is really dedicated in what he's doing and I truly wish him the best. Mommy, I would like to say congratulations. Thank you. Uh, because it's not easy to have a child that you don't need to be worried about where he is, what he's doing at this current age. Omar has been outstanding and for him to start bringing in people to come to interview you, it means that there's a lot more to be celebrated around you. Exactly. Uh, but this story cannot be complete without hearing from you. Can you tell us a little about Omar from growing up and to where he is right now? Mm, okay, my name is Ma Halima Omar. Uh, I am Farouk's mother and uh, Farouk, right from when he was uh, four five years, he started with this uh, phone something he will take your phone he will go into so many places to hide and then do some things on the phone when you ask people where is Farouk they will tell you Farouk is in the <laughs> dining table yeah. or something when you go there you will see him with the phone either my phone or his father's phone yeah. or his brother's phone <sighs> It was too much, so I started thinking, what is he doing with phone? Then I asked his brothers to be checking what he's doing with phone. Yeah. Then later on, the brothers told me that Mama Farouk is doing something reasonable. And uh, I don't know anything about this uh, social media at that time. I wasn't on this uh, social media yeah. thing, so I was just afraid. I said to I don't know if he's doing something good with oh. the phone. And uh, later on, we started seeing him or hearing him with uh, people uh, on the meetings like this. I started putting interest on what he's what doing, doing with the, yeah. Uh, one day I hear him with uh, a people from the bank, that is uh, Fidelity Bank. Oh. On meeting with them, I said, ah. So this small boy <laughs> is on meeting with big people like this. Then I put my interest to know what is going on. Then from there, I know that he's doing something good. Oh. Yeah, but before I was worried. He's always on phone, always on screen. If he's eating, he's with screen. Sometimes I used to shout on him, why are you always on your screen? Um, going to the masjid, he's, he goes uh, phone or oh, these tablets, yeah. And uh, I think even toilet, he goes with tablet. Of it, it was too much. 
to be sincere, it was too much. But Alhamdulillah, later on, we just realized he's doing something, yeah, something positive. Yeah. Um, when school stopped, how did you feel for Omar being out of school for two years? Yeah, I feel blessed because he has not wasted his time. I did not feel bad because I was thinking this uh, closure of Nigerian visa, something that will end up in no time. So uh, all we are thinking that maybe in the next two months, in the next one month, when everything is finished, he will go back to school. But at least he was doing something. He's not just sitting at home. Yeah, we have things doing here in UAE. Even with what he's doing, does he assist you with your own yeah, business? Yeah, so much, wow. so much. All right, thank you so much. Uh, advice to other parents who have kids that are also gifted? Uh, my advice to mothers in general, that they should focus on what their children are doing. Children like Umar, they are there. Some, they don't have the support they are supposed to have. And uh, the talent will be just wasted. So uh, they should focus. If your child is having this kind of talent, uh, talent you should help him guide him and uh, pray for him so that he will reach where he is supposed to reach. Very I think. Important. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much for the opportunity given to me to also have an interview with Umar and I pray for more better things to come. Thank you very Thank much. You. So yeah. if you've watched this far, please what do you have to say? Uh, if you have someone who is also talented and needs to um, be seen, please make sure that you encourage them so that they get to their destination. Mm. Mm. It is with encouragement that we're able to achieve our dreams. I have dreams, even at my age, mm. and uh, there are people who are older than me that be able to achieve their own dreams. So mm. there is nobody that cannot achieve his dreams, no matter their age. Mm. Encourage one, encourage another. Thank you so much, and, and I'll see you on another edition. It's goodbye.